Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we'll, we'll talk very briefly about the history of a very important number, zero. So our hero zero serves two purposes. It's a placeholder in a place value system, and it also represents a number in and of itself, uh, a number of items representing the absence of any amount. So for us, this concept is so uh, normal and so pervasive in our number system and the way we use numbers that you might think of this as one of the most basic numbers out there in, in a way it is uh, but um, it's uh, it's surprising how late it actually shows up it's actually unknown where the first uses of these concepts both as a placeholder and number of items uh, occurred and it's also strange that it's not like the number zero shows up and somebody says, oh, that was a fantastic idea, and then it stays forever. The concept actually kind of appears and then vanishes, returns later in a different place. So as you probably know, zero is absolutely necessary as a placeholder in a place value system. For example, to distinguish between the number 609 and the number 69. This six represents six groups of 100, but without the zero there as a placeholder, over here in 69, it would represent six groups of 10. So we need that zero there for a placeholder, and that's really kind of an absolute necessity. However, in spite of what we think of that as being a necessity, the Babylonians actually had a place value system. They were the first to have a place value system, and they had it in place for over a millennium, over a thousand years without a placeholder. So it didn't seem as obvious to them. Zero, uh, and, and by the way, even when they did uh, introduce something as a placeholder, which is a zero, even though it wasn't our normal symbol for zero, uh, it was not really represented as a number in and of itself, but only as a placeholder. So that's, they kind of eventually got one of the uses, but not the other. Again, over a thousand years after they first introduced this number system. Um, in India, when the Indian numerals, uh, zero was used as a placeholder at least uh, by 650 of the Common Era, which is, you know, in one sense, not that long ago. Um, they also used a symbol for zero similar to our normal symbol that we use today. So the natural numbers are natural, but including zero was not. So the natural numbers, when I say the natural numbers are natural, they used natural numbers in pretty much any ancient culture. It goes so far back we can't even, can't even track it back there. As far as we have any kind of recorded history, we had natural numbers. But including zero was, relatively speaking, a relatively uh, recent event. So the Indian mathematics mathematicians also use zero not only as a placeholder, but as a number in and of itself, at least by the 7th century. Also by the 7th century, the Mayans, independently over in the Americas, had a place value system with a zero that operated both as a placeholder and as a number. So the, uh, in that part, the Mayan culture had the concept of a zero as early as probably the Indians, more or less, or about the same time. The modern use of zero, both as a number, a legitimate number, just as legitimate as the natural numbers, and as also as a placeholder in this, uh, you know, using the Hindu Arabic numeration system, that didn't happen in Europe, or at least it wasn't fully used throughout Europe and all calculations had really thought of as the same kind of a number uh, until around the 17th century. So really relatively recently, very recently really, um, was zero actually given the legitimate status as a you know, full membership in the number system. Uh, nowadays when we talk about it, we talk about the natural numbers, those are the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, etc. And the whole numbers are the natural numbers along with zero as well. Okay, I think uh, we may add some other videos at some point, but right now that's my list of videos for this first week of the history of math class. 
come back for the next playlist as we look a little bit more into the ancient history, uh, including some more information about Babylonian and Egyptian and, and some of these other uh, mathematical systems. And we'll work our way into uh, Greek mathematics as well.